Yo, what's going on everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. Today we're going to be talking about how you can build a Zal for yourself. Zals are straight up my favorite weapon type in the entire game. And if you've never built a Zal for yourself, then I highly recommend building one. Those of you who don't know what Zals are, they're modular melee weapons that you can craft. A Zal is made up of three parts, a strike, a grip, and a link. You can get blueprints for each of these parts. And once you actually build those parts, you can actually bring them to the Master Swordsmith Hope, and he can actually forge the Zal for you. Well, that's basically in a nutshell how you build a Zal. I'm going to be explaining the process that I like to do when I build a Zaw. What better way to do that than just build a Zaw myself in this video? However, I'm going to highly advise that you get to rank 3 with Austron before you even attempt to build a Zaw. And the reason is because once you actually build a Zaw, you will have to guild it. Gilding your Zaw is a must do process if you want to make the Zaw do even more damage with Arcanes and if you want to customize it. You can't even change the colors of your Zaw until you actually guild it. Gilding only costs 5,000 standing and you do have to be rank 3 with Austron. And once that process is done, not only can you customize your Zaw like Warframes and weapons, but you can also give your Zaw a custom name. For those of you who don't know what Exodia Contagion is, in a nutshell, that is an arcane for Zaws that is a must-have if you want your Zaw to have a projectile attack that can do millions and potentially billions of damage with just a single projectile. It's pretty amazing. Let's go ahead and dive into how you actually build a Zaw. First things first, you're gonna wanna head over to Cetus and talk to the Master Swordsmith himself, Hulk. Like I said earlier, a Zaw is made of a strike, a grip, and a link, and you can get a blueprint for each of those parts, and this is exactly where you get those parts. Choose wisely, there are over a thousand different combinations when it comes to Zaws, and all of them have different properties. At the end of the day, they're all still gonna hit like a fucking truck if you build it, right? But still, you wanna choose your parts wisely. Whenever you choose a strike, you wanna make sure you know which type of weapon you want because the strike is going to determine what type of Zaw you have. So for example, since I got the Sefin blueprint, as you can see here is a balanced Zaw strike for Nakana and staff weapon, which is perfect for me because I'm going for a Nakana build. Who knows, maybe you want a staff, maybe you want a hammer. There are many options to choose from, so pick wisely. When it comes to the grip things you need to keep in mind, do you want your Zaw to be a one-handed Zaw or a two-handed type of Zaw? The grip will make a big difference in the actual speed of the Zaw. But again, it's really up to you and what type of Zaw you're trying to build. I'm going to go with the Corp grip, which is a one-handed grip and has really good damage. And then you really need to choose wisely when it comes to picking your Link, because Links actually grant a variety of stat bonuses to the weapon with corresponding penalties, which means no matter which Link you pick, it will have a positive and a negative, or maybe it will have two positives and two negatives. And like I said earlier, I'm trying to build an Akanaza, which means I'm going for damage and critical chance, which makes the Vargit to Ruhong Link perfect for me, because I'm not really worried about speed or status chance on a weapon where I'm throwing throwing a projectile that does a bunch of damage. You know what I mean? But again, this is just how I like to build my Zaws. If you're a little bit confused, I highly recommend going over to this website right here. This is the Zaw page on the Warframe wiki on fandom.com. The link will be in the description down below. And this website is just super helpful when it comes to looking at actual numbers when it comes to the Zaw parts. Like for example, you can see the seventh strike right here is for Nakanas and Staffs, and it also does slash damage. Same with the grips. You get to see the stats of the grips right here. This is why I like to choose Corp. That damage is really all I'm worried about at the end of the day. But you know, to each their own, choose whichever one you want, and it's the same with the links. They got all of the actual stats next to them, and the reason I actually went with Varki to Ruhong is so I can get as much crit chance as possible. And as you can see, Varki to Ruhong actually increases critical chance by plus two, which is what I personally really like. But at the end of the day, choose whichever combination of parts you want. So now that you actually have the blueprints for your Zaw parts, it's time to actually build them and get the materials for them, which is where I'm gonna recommend the Warframe wiki on fandom again. It just makes this process so much easier for actually finding the resources you need, and I'm going to explain how. So for example, we need to build the Seven Strike Zaw. Once we actually go to the Seven Strike Zaw page, we can see the manufacturing requirements right here. And the best part is you can actually click on these resources and it'll tell you exactly what they are and where to get them. Like Copyright Alloy, for example. I'm going to need 60 Copyright Alloy if I want to build this Seven Strike Zaw. And whenever I actually go to the Copyright Alloy page on the wiki, it tells me that I can actually get a blueprint from Old Man Sumbat in Cetus. Once you get the blueprint, this is what you're going to need to build the blueprint. I'm going to need 50 Rubido, 400 Ferrite, and 20 Copran. You can get these on specific planets by farming each mission, and if you're not sure, guess what? You can always click on the actual link, and it'll take you to the page and tell you where you could actually farm these. So now that it's time to actually collect the materials, we're going to break this down into three different processes. We're going to have to do some mining, some fishing, and some
some hunting. And I'm gonna go over exactly how I like to do each of these processes. Now keep in mind, I'm sure there are other ways you could actually do this. This is just my method of actually collecting the materials so I can build this all myself. So let's go ahead and start with fishing. Once again, I'm gonna highly recommend Warframe fandom a lot throughout this video because it's just so goaded. Long story short, you're gonna need a fishing spear, bait, and die. In reality, all you need is a fishing spear and bait, but at the end of the day, having die makes this process infinitely easier. And you can buy the fishing spear you need from Hi Luke, who is of course in Cetus. You can also buy bait and die from her. And ladies and gentlemen, this is why I'm gonna recommend you this website. So you're gonna wanna scroll down to you get to this part right here where it says species and planes of Eidolon. All you simply have to do is open view common species list and you can see all the different types of fish. As you saw earlier for my Zaw, I actually have the Vargi 2 Ruhong link. And if we look at the manufacturing requirements, I need five Trelock eyes. This is gonna show you how to actually get Trelock. As you can see, all I gotta do is click Trelock and it tells me what biome they're in when they spawn and effective spears that I can use to catch them. But what if you actually don't know where the biomes are? Well, guess what? This website is legit as fuck. If you scroll down to fishing locations and biomes, you can just quite literally open this picture in another tab. And as you can see, you got a whole fishing zone map of Cetus. Shout out to Kayo Rec who made this map because this is amazing. And since we're looking for Trelock that spawn in the daytime in the ocean, all we got to do is go look at the picture. Oh, would you look at that? Ocean is over here. Bet. And then you just go over there, start fishing, and hopefully you get lucky. So whenever you need Trelock eyes, you pretty much just rinse and repeat this process. And not only is this going to help me get some Trelock eyes, but it also helps me get the fish scales that I need for the Seffen Strike and the fish oil that I need for the Corb Grip, which is exactly why I like to separate these processes because there's a lot of materials you got to get for all of these parts. So doing each of them at a separate time makes the process so much easier. When it comes to hunting, there is an item you will need to have in your gear wheel to make sure that the hunting process goes as smooth as possible. And that item is none other than the Trank Rifle. How do you get the Trank Rifle? Man, Warframe fandom coming in clutch again. You can actually buy the Trank Rifle from the business on Fortuna or Sun on Dymos, and they each cost 500 standing for whichever one you choose. To actually have the Trank Rifle equipped, it's time to actually pull out the Arc Wing. You don't really need the Arc Wing, it just makes it easier. Long story short, you're going to aim down sight with the Trank Rifle, and here's where we're going to be looking for Chondrox. And the reason is because we actually need Chondrox Wings to build the Seven Strike Zaw. And in order to actually find the symbols, all you got to do is look around. Eventually, you will see some glowing yellow symbols. You just want to fly toward them and look and see what kind of actual animal it is. If it's a Chondrox, you've hit the jackpot. And from here, you're going to want to sneak up on the Chondrox. Don't get too close, but make sure that you can actually kill them before they take off. And once you kill them, they will drop some Chondrox Wings. I'm just going to be honest, you could really save this process for last if you wanted because it definitely takes the shortest amount of time. But depending on how long you spend fishing, sometimes you may want just a little bit of a break. Now that we got the hunting out the way, there's only one part of the process left, which is to get the mining materials we need. And for this, you're going to need another gear wheel item called the Sunpoint Plasma Drill. You can get a Sunpoint Plasma Drill from Smokefinger in Fortuna. It will cost 2,500 standing, but at the end of the day, it is hella worth it. Once you have it equipped in your hand from the gear wheel, it's time to go mining. Load up the Minecraft because we're going into a cave. So what I like to do is bring up the map, and I just like to pick this one on the left. Once you get here, all you got to do is aim down sight with the Sunpoint Plasma Drill, find the ore color that you need, and get to mine it away. Now, I'm going to be real here. This part may get a little bit controversial because I don't know how you like to mine. Normally, a lot of people like to hold down the beam. Make sure you're aiming the beam correctly and, you know, you time it perfectly so you can get the most amount of ore you can. And I pretty much do this like I'm speed running the mining process. And the reason I do that is because, well, truth be told, this is just how I like to do it. You do get a lot less when you do it this way, but there are so many ore veins around the map in so many caves that it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You could just go to another cave when you're done with one, which is exactly why I don't waste time just holding down the trigger. I like to go fast and just speed through the whole thing. And if you had a speed warframe on like Volt, you could make this process even faster. And again, as you can see on the website, in order to get copyright alloy, I'm going to need to mine up Copran, which is available from the red veins in the plains of Eidolon. On top of that, in order to build the Corb Grip, I'm going to need some Pyrol, and Pyrol is also found in red veins on the plains of Eidolon. And once you have enough, you just simply go back to the foundry and build up the parts. It's really that simple. Again, this process may be a little bit different depending on the Zaw parts you have, but generally speaking, this is pretty much how it goes. Now it's time to craft all the copyright alloy and the pyrotic alloy that we need. And once we're done with that, we just simply build all of the blueprints. And once those parts are built, you can take them back to Hoke and he will build your Zaw for you. My man's only charging 4,000. Give that man his respect. As far as building the Zaw goes, it's really that simple. However, keep in mind, you're not quite done once you just build the Zaw. There's still a little bit
little bit more you got to do. The next step after you build the Zal is to guild the Zal. And hey, remember earlier in the video when I said I recommend that you be rank 3 before you even start this process? Well, this is exactly why, because you actually have to be rank 3 in order to guild your Zal. But you also have to level up the Zal to rank 30, and you also have to have 2 Cetus Wisps and 5,000 standing. And once you do that, you can go back to Hoke, go to other services, and guild your Zal. This process is super important. It allows you to change the appearance of your Zal, like Warframes and weapons, and it also allows you to give your Zal a custom name, which is absolutely necessary after all the work you just put in. And now we have the Great King of Hell, Enma. Oh yeah, I'm so excited. You'll also notice up here, I have Enma, the King of Hell. This was the original. The reason I went ahead and made a different version is mainly because I like Nakana Zals the most. The main reason I went ahead and built this Dokram Zal originally was because one of my friends has this exact same type of Zal and it inspired me so much that I wanted to have one for myself. I basically built mine in the same way that he built his, but I always plan to make the Nakana version of this weapon and uh, yeah, here it is. Let's get it, dude. I'm excited. And now it's time to link my Zal to the power that it needs. I got the arcane slots ready and there it is. Boom! An official Exodia Contagion Zaw. You love to see it. Obviously, the Zaw is unranked because it just got gilded, but at the end of the day, it's all good. We're gonna level it up no problem. And, uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much gonna be it for this video. If you didn't know how to build a Zaw already, hopefully this video has helped you to learn how to build a Zaw on your own. And even if you did know how to build a Zaw, I still wanted to share my perspective on how I personally go about building my Zaws and just how I like to do it. I know the mining thing might not be the best at the end of the day, but sometimes I'm just in a hurry, man. I'll just go to another cave. Now that you actually have gilded your Zaw, if you want to take it to the next level from there, I got a whole nother video on how to be a Zaw master. I go into detail about how you can actually make your Exodia Contagion Zaw stronger. I also got another video of me hitting damage cap with a Zaw. And of course, that video will also be in the description. Before this video ends, real quick, just wanted to say thank you guys so much for all the support on the channel. Really do appreciate all the support that you guys show on the video, especially when it comes to Exodia Contagion Zaws. You guys know I absolutely love Zaws. They're my favorite weapon type in the entire game. And Nakanda Zaws in particular are my absolute favorite of the bunch. And yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and that's gonna be it for me. Keep your head up, stay positive. And with that being said, thanks for watching.